Good morning, everybody. Um, as we begin on this Tuesday morning, let's begin with Luther's prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. And our morning prayer, if I got that. There we go. Let's do this one. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy trinity, one God, who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Alleluia. For our scripture, I thought I would do, I remember to do this this day. You know, it's kind of good with a pastor that you remember to read scripture occasionally, you know. One of those things that it should be just natural to not forget, right? So this is Matthew 6 starting with verse 26, or 25, sorry. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not, food, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And... Uh, are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that even not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. And that is how God clothes if that is how God clothes, clothes the grass of the field, where it is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, and what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The word of the Lord. <laughs> oh, I love this text because no kind of where, depending on where you are in life, you'll hear it differently. Um, sometimes it's a mocking, like, "Don't worry. Are you kidding? Are you? I need to worry right now. These bills are due, or things are hard right now." And it feels like it's mocking us sometimes uh, if you're struggling because there might be reason to worry. And for that, that, that's when you feel the law in that way. That last part, seek first the kingdom and God's righteousness and all these things will be given to you. Part of what we need that builds up our anxiety and our worry is the word of God. To just be told and reminded that God knows and God cares, and God will provide. Um, we need to hear that word, even when we're not feeling it, even though, though when, when our cupboard ends up being a little bit more bare, or we worry about that next bill that we need to pay, or how we're gonna make ends meet because of some disasters, right? Um, but it also is a challenge for those when we, when we have plenty, and why, and to look at, the reality of those around us and say, well, what can I be generous with today? Because I don't need to hoard. I don't need to um, have silos full of rainy day funds because that is also, I mean, there's a balance is what I'm trying to say. There's a balance between future thinking and then current mm -hmm. thinking. And we, we can be dwell in this word of trust and I always think this time of year I love reading this passage in the spring especially when like the cherry blossoms are out and you know that they're just gorgeous 
and then one big wind or one big rain and they're all going to be on, on the ground and we're going to be stepping all over them. And it just, it makes me realize, you know, God has time for that much beauty that is so fragile. And we are here for a lifetime. And then God has actually chosen for us to be with him for eternity. So I think he's going to take care of us <laughs> and want us to thrive. The other piece that I, I like about this text is the um, Martin Luther King talked about this one, about how worrying is like a rocking chair. It doesn't get you anywhere. So just think that when you're worried right now, um, that perspective piece of, okay, what can I do? What can't I do? Um, who can I ask for help? Who can I help? But then also, am I just rocking back and forth and just creating more stress than I need to? Um, how can I dwell in God's word and God's promise for this day for me so that I can continue to live abundantly, even when there's some legitimate worries out there? So whatever you're worrying about today, know that God knows too, and that God is providing in ways that you probably don't even know yet. Thanks be to God. And then from our Sinner Saint devotional, I have too many books out today. Let's see what's next today. Planted in His Garden by Cindy Coach. Mm -hmm. And Carmelo just might break through the glass door to get this robin out there. So if that happens, if you hear a big crash, don't worry. It's just my dog <laughs> birding. I mean, you have a tip. Pitbull Terrier, so, you know, he's just being what he was made to be. Psalm 1, verse 3. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in good season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. In the beginning of God's great story, he crafted an earth, a spoken creation, inhaling God's breath of new life. Light, water, beasts and birds, flowers and trees. In the beginning of God's great story, he gave this incredible gift to his finest creations, man and woman. Every plant and animal, day and night, sun and moon, surrounded the most excellent of God's handiwork. His fleshy image walking around in the Garden of Eden. In the beginning of God's great story, he placed his people there resting them gently and firmly in the center of his love as the apple of his eye. Our story of humankind began there, just as your prayers begin in the book of Psalms, planted in his garden. Our very first prayer in Psalm 1 digs right into the heart of who we are. Blessed, the psalmist said, you are loved and favored by our great almighty God. You do not walk with those wicked ones. You do not stand with those sinners. You do not live with those who hate your God. The intensity builds, speaking of a separation from the unbelieving, unbeloved, unblessed people all around. Yet a quick ache of confusion makes me wonder who I really am. I have not walked with the wicked ones quite a few. I have walked with the wicked ones quite a few times, if we're honest, right? Whether I knew it or not, I listened to their counsel. I stand with the sinners, even defending their cause. I haven't spoken up when I should have. I stood back when God called me to action. I dwell with the mockers, living right next to their awful, hateful words. Mm -hmm. Am I the blessed one? In this psalm, is this psalm even for me? Our very first song in Psalm 1 presses down deep into the center of who you are blessed, the psalmist says, you are righteous and faithful to our great almighty God. You love the law, the Torah of Yahweh, God. You meditate on his law, his Torah, every minute of the day and night, every second in, of your time, every piece of your body and soul is captivated by the Lord. Yet an honest twinge of guilt makes me wonder who I really am. I have forgotten the word of God. I have not let his word have its way with me. I even hate the law of God, feeling condemned and ashamed when it gets too close. Am I a blessed one? Are these prayers even for me? 
and you will hear of the great many answers to this question. Some will say, yes, you are blessed, but only if you can keep yourself away from those terrible sinners and your own wicked sin. Others may say, yes, you are blessed, but only if you can focus your heart, body, and soul on keeping the law of God. Your best intentions and incomplete actions and terrible wickedness are mashed into a pitiful display before the great and almighty God. But it is the very next verse that frames your beginning in the book of Psalms. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Unlike any preparation he can do to himself, here is the true beginning. The blessed one is planted, or she is planted, right? He or she. The word of the original Hebrew text is passive. By no action of their own, they are taken from one place and placed in another, passively transplanted into a new beginning. Here in fresh, deep earth, your roots will be freely drink of the life-giving water. Having been placed in God's bountiful garden, there you will live. The blessed one will do what she or he was created to do, produce fruit a natural gift from the creative voice of God. Each season, each day, each minute, you are being bidden, bidden to with budding with green leaves. This blessed plant, this blessed one will never wither nor die. Unlike any preparation you can do to yourself, here is your true beginning. You have been planted in the fertile soil of God's word. You have been carefully uprooted, personally, pers purposefully, I can't, some words just are too hard, purposefully transplanted, but by no action of your own. The creative word of God even stretches your thirsty roots into his life-giving water, drinking in the, his law, his Torah, his commands, and the promises of wonderful works from the beginning of creation, drinking in God's gospel, his promise fulfilled and completed and given to you by Jesus Christ. You have no other sustenance. There is nothing you can do but soak it in. So, yeah, so my friend, yes, you are blessed, transplanted into the promise of a life-giving blood of a Savior. You are firmly rooted among his faithful body of Christ. You are separated from the unbelieving, unbelieving sinners. You are eternally delight. You eternally delight in the law, the Torah of Yahweh, because you have died and risen with Christ. In the beginning of this journey through Psalms, God places you, resting you gently and firmly in the center of his love, as the apple of his eye in the righteousness of his beloved son. This is your beginning, planted in his garden. So this reminded me actually of um, how I teach confirmation. So, you know, they're, they're middle schoolers, and so they, they like uh, middle school humor. So I say that we are butt detectors as Lutherans. B-U-T. So wherever your mind went, we are but detectors. So you listen to God loves you, but you are chosen one of God, but yes, you are blessed. But whenever you hear the but, you need to close your ears and say, nope, there is no conditions here. God has chosen me and he has completed it all for me. It's not a, if I do this, then God will do that. It is a, because God has done this, therefore I am God's child. So whenever you're thinking about those doubts you have, listen for your buts. You know, God, you know, God is with me, but, or God provides, but, and just stop and wonder why you are qualifying what God is saying or trying to add a condition because there is no condition on God's love for you. It is complete. It is full. It is yours fully in Christ Jesus. And the other piece with this that um, to kind of pull out a little bit right now is that it's a passiveness that you have been transplanted. God didn't say, okay, who wants to have good soil? Who wants to be in a sunny place near a river? God, God just says, well, he doesn't, he says what he has done, but he does it. And his saying is his doing. So God transplants you. God puts you in the soil. God gives you the word that you need to flourish, that you need to um, bear fruit. 
um, to be nourished, to be provided for. That's partly why the do not worry texts of earlier today, mm. God provides and that passiveness of us is complicated for us sometimes because we want to have a role in it but it's when you when it comes down to it it is something that we have as pure gift so know this day that god is nourishing you god is providing for you god is your god and god will never let you go thanks be to god let's see so from our Ordinary Blessings book, I know that in here in Washington, we're starting to see some flatlining of our, our diagnosis, but there's other diagnosis as well. And there's still a fear of, as we go out and we start maybe one of these days starting to reopen um, new diagnoses. So this is a poem for a new diagnosis. My heart beats hard like powerful weather that rumbles deep in my eardrums, causing a tremor in my toes. The new has nowhere to land at first, though it tries to press on, in on, every memory, every dream, every square inch of my skin. How long will it feast on this air between me and the world, between me and those who breathe some certainty? How long will this Syncopation keep me from the songs that used to hold me in rhythm with my body and this life. How long before I am found in this cacophony of fear by someone who recognizes their grief in mine? I am listening, listening, waiting. My toes still tingle. I hum softly and I wait to be claimed by a fearless love that knows this beat. One of the, sometimes the fear is not knowing what's going on. And then the next step is having a name for it and needing to confront and decide and kind of hold on to what that means now. I'm sure many people right now who go and get that test when they're allowed to get the test even um, and either get the know you're negative and go, hmm that I'm so sick though, what's going on? Or get the COVID um, positive result and go, what does this mean? Who have I been around? Who else could possibly? Um, but then also the, the what do, I think you focus in on yourself a lot too. But that's a lot with other diagnoses too, you know, heart disease, COPD, cancer, um, diabetes. And as we get those, diagnoses that can become labels of who we are and kind of permeate all of our person and there is a moment of having others who recognize us as people that are struggling in a new diagnosis that life is more than that but also there is a reality that everything has changed at least for a time so know that God holds us even when everything changes. And this I'm going to skip because it has a bunch of, this one from, um, I'll show you the pictures, but it's all in French. I have a cousin who is a French professor down in Tennessee. Maybe I'll have her read it for us and then put it recording. So the days of the week, um, I, I'm not going to even try, sorry. <laughs> So we will go to the next page. Take my time. Oh, look at this. I'm imagining what it's going to be about because there's a, a father looking at his clock while his son ties his shoes. And you never feel as unholy or as unworthy as being a pastor trying to get your kids out of, out of the house to get to church on time. <laughs> there's a lot I can confess by the time I get to church. Let me just tell you that way. <laughs> Take my time. I like to take my time. I mean that when I want to do a thing. I like to take my time to do it right. I mean, I might just make mistakes if I should have to hurry. And so I like to take my time to tie my shoes, to eat, to get dressed. 
to go to sleep at night to sing a song for you and everything I like to do. I like to take my time. I mean that when I want to do a thing, I like to take my time to do it well. I mean, I might just make mistakes if I should have to hurry up. So I like to take my time. And as you can see, there's a little turtle there. So sometimes it's good to be slow, I guess. I'm not so convinced, but you know, I can be a little bit more compassionate maybe on the time frame. <laughs> a little bit. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of your risen Lord, who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation, for the flowers that are blooming and giving glory to the skylines or the fields, for the birds that are finding those first worms of the season, for fresh air and the wonder of our patios and our decks and times to be outside, for the new creation in Christ and all the gifts of healing and forgiveness, for the gifts of relationship with others and the ability to be creative in reaching out, for the communion of faith in your church, merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. We pray especially for those who govern nations of the world, especially for President Trump and Governor Inslee and our local county and city authorities. For our police officers and first responders, for our grocery workers and agriculturalists, for those who are preparing food for our children and for those who are working from home. We pray for those who are worried about how to pay for their bills, how to feed their families, how to keep their house and their life. We ask you to provide through, through whatever means that you can give or you can help us give to one another so that everyone is supported in this time and so that worries for tomorrow can can be put off for the reality of providing for today. And as we get through today together, that we can also see that we can get through tomorrow together and the next day. Help us to live in the moment and also care for those around us in their moments as well. For all who work for peace and international harmony, for all who strive to save, save the earth from carelessness and destruction, from the Church of Jesus Christ in every land. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Preserve us in your mighty power that we may not fall into sin or be overcome in adversity or worry. In all that we do, direct us to your fulfilling of your purpose and for your provision for us as you transplant us into your word and provide us with our every need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in the kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us today and always. Amen. <laughs>